Animal Crossing New Horizons is my 2020 Game of the Year for so, so many reasons. Nintendo's quaint island life simulation game was in the works for eight years after New Leaf came out in 2012. But despite the hype around its release, little to none of us realised just how big of an impact Animal Crossing New Horizons would have on people, communities and political movements all around the world. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but 2020 has been a trash fire. Coronavirus has been ripping any semblance of normality apart, and during that time, we've all turned to various forms of escapism. And for many people, myself included, Animal Crossing New Horizons helped to deal with that garbage first half of 2020. So, here's why Animal Crossing New Horizons is my game of the year. Geez, I went there straight away by mentioning the coronavirus, didn't I? Yet, it's one of the key reasons why Animal Crossing New Horizons is my 2020 game of the year. When everything went to shit, me and my friends, like millions of other people, turned to Animal Crossing New Horizons for comfort and familiarity. Discord chats became a regular part of our weeks, and our Animal Crossing WhatsApp chat thrived. Amid the disruption to our normal work and leisure habits, we visited each other's islands, gifted items through the post, went on friend dates to the museum and the aquarium, and on the less heartwarming side, enticed someone else's villager to our own island once they tired of them. No offence, Hamlet, old chum. You just need to spread your wings. Taking photos together was a special kind of hell, though, to be honest, as coordinating a group of eight people to do a reaction at the same time and have them all facing the right way was like herding cats. Loud, excitable cats who won't stop hitting each other with nets. Escapism is at the heart of Animal Crossing, pure and simple. Mind you, Animal Crossing New Horizons wasn't escapism from the world and our surroundings in the usual way games are, as on those islands we recreated our life in miniature. Outfitting our homes, planting flowers, altering our island with stepping stones, bridges and ramps to fit the exact type of respite we needed, Animal Crossing New Horizons is an idealistic place where, however briefly, our surroundings are within our control. For me, one of the biggest things I like about Animal Crossing New Horizons is that unless you have some serious redecorating or terraforming work to do, it's not a game that lends itself to being played all day. With a limited amount of activities you can do each day, especially before you unlock terraforming, there comes a point where you can simply run out of things to do. Filling each day to the brim with endless tasks and cycling objectives, apart from your daily, optional Nook Miles Plus tasks, simply isn't in Animal Crossing New Horizons DNA. Meaning, without some massive island rejuvenation plan, you can't really pour a whole day into the game. Not often do you find a game that encourages you to have a game-slash-life balance. Sure, when everything kicked off and the majority of us had to stay at home, I thought I wanted a game I could bury myself in all day. But having Horizons gently encouraged me not to spend the entire day collecting fossils meant I had respite from the real world for a bit, but also the mental space to process what was going on too. Solo time in Animal Crossing New Horizons was dreamily zen. Apart from when you're being chased by goddamn wasps, my god. Friends flying over to your little slice of paradise could encompass the chaos I've already mentioned, with them rampaging across the island or sneakily making acquisitions of your fruit and fossils, yet there are also kinder, quieter ways you could show your friends that you're thinking of them. Postcards and gifts sent to letterboxes let your loved ones know that you're thinking of them without needing a virtual face-to-face -face meeting. And I don't know about you, but I found that when you're on the receiving end, these letters don't always put pressure on you to reply. They're a check-in of sorts, something that doesn't really require you to do anything in return unless you want to, unlike my graveyard of WhatsApp messages that I forgot to respond to speedily enough and now feel too guilty to reply to them. Beyond keeping immediate social circles intact and more or less lucid during such a stressful time, Animal Crossing New Horizons also became an unexpected proxy for people to organise and stand together no matter how far apart they were in real life. During a time when social gatherings were restricted or outright banned, 
Animal Crossing New Horizons transformed from a quaint multiplayer life simulator to a platform for activists, a virtual hosting space for major life events, and a stand-in studio for entertainers who could no longer commute to work. It's hard to think of more than a handful of games that have become sandbox social hubs, malleable for whatever purpose their players desire, and fewer still that have been not just a space for virtual events and activities, but a replacement for real-life gatherings. When the pandemic first hit, weddings all across the world were cancelled, as bringing over 100 people together in a small space was the biggest of no-nos. In lieu of getting married in a real-life ceremony, Nazmal Ahmed surprised his fiancée Sharmin Asha with an Animal Crossing New Horizons wedding. Not a legally binding one, of course, and it's no replacement for the real thing, but players in New Horizons have been creating many more spaces like this to mimic normal life when reality, as we used to know it, has been put on hold. Weddings aren't the only thing that have been replicated in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Dates, graduations, Dungeons and Dragons sessions and birthday parties were, and are still, being organised in Animal Crossing New Horizons. It was host to rallies by Hong Kong pro-democracy activists and Black Lives Matter, Biden and Harris has yard signs you could decorate your island with, Monterey Bay Aquarium streamed their feedings in Blathers Aquarian and teamed up with etymologist Floyd Shockley to chat about the insects they caught, and new virtual talk shows like Animal Talking begun. As much as the game is a place for people to come together, the deeply personal aspect of how you make Nintendo's game feel like your own virtual home has led to some creating memorials for those loved ones whose real-life memorials they couldn't attend because it just wasn't safe to do so. Disruption to the normal mourning process has been rife, what with the social distancing and stay-at-home orders that have become commonplace. To make up for being unable to attend memorials in person, players have found comfort in creating their own way to remember their lost friends and family in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Steph Towler told Polygon how she's planted a sprawling sea of yellow flowers in remembrance of her mother. Sitting there among the flowers every time she logs out of the game, she says that signs like a shooting star going above your Animal Crossing memorial become so meaningful in ways that you just don't realise, and they just hit in a different way. Towler isn't alone. Many more have personalised their island in Animal Crossing New Horizons to commemorate those they miss, finding solace in creating spaces to remember them by. Branching out from the personal experiences people have had with Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you look at the culture explosion around the game, players created and continued to create different ways to get enjoyment – or satisfaction might be the better word for some of these – out of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Memes, fashion, interior design, playing the stork market and trading villagers have sprung up as a kind of… God, I don't even know the word for it. An ecosystem, maybe? Or an unintentional ARG which reaches far beyond the game itself to real life? Forums and Twitter threads and Reddit posts explain and explore new creations, discoveries and tactics on topics ranging from pixel art to dress designs to how many Nook Miles tickets someone wants to sell Raymond for. You might have used Animal Crossing New Horizons as a temporary substitute for real-life gatherings. You might have created memorials in the game to those you miss, or played the stork market hard and reaped millions of bells as a reward. You might have traded villagers with friends until all your favourites were on your island, come up with new designs for clothes, art and face paint. Or you might have played Animal Crossing New Horizons and just enjoyed creating your own little island filling up Blathers Museum and wishing on shooting stars. No matter how you played Animal Crossing New Horizons, Nintendo's game is my game of the year because how you played it taught you something about yourself. It showed how we can make a space our own and adapt it to suit what we need at the time and what form our momentary distraction from life will take. Animal Crossing New Horizons is not just a great game because of how it unfolds to reveal the ways you can turn your island into a home, but also because of the positive, wholesome space it provides without getting relentlessly saccharine. In a year when few things were certain, Animal Crossing's New Horizons was both a distraction and a way to process the changes happening all around us. And that's the many, many reasons why Animal Crossing New Horizons is my 2020 game of the year. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like the video 
and subscribe to Eurogamer for more videos about Animal Crossing New Horizons, because Ian has made a lot of them and they're all gold. Plus, we have a new video out every day, so there's always something to watch. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and chat to my villagers who are feeling a little bit neglected, so I'll see you next time.